welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate. I'm a part-time English literature student at the University of Oxford and a full-time Google employee. In this video, I thought I would wrap up my books that I have been reading for the last three months. Let's call it a quarterly book wrap-up review. I thought I'd talk a little bit about the books that I have read as a part of my 2023 TBR, which I will leave a link up to the video talking about that in the corner somewhere and down below and I will also talk about the books that I have read as a part of my Sunbeam Jess book club that I am a part of. I'll leave a link to the discord down below as well as the Accepted Society book club which I will leave a link, a link down below. So let's dive straight in. I have eight books I believe that I've read in the last three months. Now just to caveat this is not a reflection of how many books I've actually read in the last three months because these are only non-academic books. It doesn't include the books that I have read as a part of my Oxford University course so I won't be including those but if you are interested in seeing the books that I read as a part of my Oxford degree or certificate please do let me know I can do I can include those books in the next wrap up or I can do a whole video about it by itself so do let me know in the comments down below if that is something you'd be interested in seeing all right let's dive straight in so on my 2023 TBR I have 21 books that I want to read that are non-academic books that I've pulled together and of those 21, I have read four, I believe, from that current list. Yes, four from that current list. And they've all been really fantastic books. So let's dive into them. The first book that I read as a part of this is Jane Austen's compilation of shorter stories, The Watsons, Lady Susan and Sanderson. And I really enjoyed this little compilation. I don't have a physical copy here because I read it on my way to New York for our accepted uh, weekend, working weekend, fun weekend, whatever you want to call it. And I left the book with Kaylin because she's also a big Jane Austen fan and I thought she would like to read them. And I read them in one sitting on the flight on the way there. So I really enjoyed these these shorter stories. One was written by Austen when she was a bit younger. The other one, Sanditon, was written, I believe, before she passed, so she never finished it. It's not completed as a book yet, or it's not completed as a book. And it was really interesting to read these books and kind of see her growth from when she was younger and all the way up until you know just before she passed and obviously she'd written all her her famous novels in between the time which was quite fascinating and then to also see her kind of engage with different forms of writing so Lady Susan is a is a book that is written in the format of letters from, between people and seeing Austen engage with that uh, you see um is it Anne Bronte that engages with that in a bit more detail? Yes, Anne Bronte engages with that uh, that format in The Tenant of Whitefell Hall. And yeah, I just think it's really, really fascinating um, to see her engaging with that form. So if you are an Austen fan or you want to kind of dip your toes into Austen to see if you'd like her writing, I would highly recommend picking up the smaller these smaller stories, as I say, they're really, really short and they can get through quite a, you can get through them quite quickly. And yeah, really good way to kind of kickstart the year on the, on the TBR. The next book that I read as a part of the TBR is The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. And this is a dystopian novel. It's probably it's probably the first dystopian novel I picked up in quite a long time. I believe the last one that I read was A Brave New World by Adolf Huxley. 
probably years ago. I, I can't even remember when I last read that book. But I mean, for me, dystopian novels can never get as good as George Orwell's 1984. But I was surprised by this one. I thought the concept was really, really interesting. Um, the idea of memory and objects associated with memory that disappear through the characters, but they're obviously characters that don't forget these things. The premise of it, the dystopian idea behind it, was really original and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fascinating, fascinating book to, to read and to engage with. And it's made me want to kind of delve into more dystopian books that I suppose you would consider as contemporary. So yeah, I thought I thought it was a really great book. The one thing that I will say about this book is that the ending is pretty predictable and the pacing towards the end kind of prompts it on very, very quickly before you know it, you're right at the end of the book and the story is ending. And I think I think the pacing is purposeful. Obviously it, it kind of mirrors the effects of what's going on in the book. At the same time, I just thought the ending didn't quite sit right with me. It kind of felt like it could be better. At the same time, I don't really see how the ending could be better. Once, you know, once everything's happened, there's no resolution and there can't really be a resolution in the story. And maybe that's the point. And maybe that's why it doesn't sit well and maybe that's the point is that it's not supposed to sit well with you because it hasn't kind of left my mind this is one thing I remember about this book nonetheless I just I thought the ending was a bit flat and predictable and yeah so that was that book but I highly recommend it I did give it four stars and if you are a dystopian fan I would definitely recommend this book the next book that I read was quite an outsider in terms of its form and its structure and this is The Lost Children's Archive by Valerie Lucelli. This book is haunting, it's really brilliant, it's, it's a really emotional book and I would, I would double check um, on kind of reading a little bit about it before you dive into it. I think it can be emotionally scarring for a lot of people, this book, but it does trace the the journeys of children that are trying to cross the border into North America. So it is very, it's an emotional subject, but the way that this is written and what I think is so incredibly brilliant about this book is the adaptation of fiction. So the storyline is really, really interesting. It sort of cross sets between two different plot lines and two different storylines. But what is super interesting in this book is also to see how it has been written like an archive. been written like an archive in that it also incorporates pieces of evidence throughout the book. Um, so historical documents, or photographs or uh, theory and that kind of stuff. And so I don't think this would be a book for everyone, particularly if you're not, you know, really interested in if you're just interested in a plot driven book that's straightforward then I don't think this would be for, for you. However, I thought it was absolutely fascinating how they played, fascinating how they played with that form. And this book has stuck with me. The themes have stuck with me. I've, I've thought about it a lot since finishing this book and I can understand why. Um, this book was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2019 and for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And I believe, I'll double check myself, but I believe it won the Dublin Literary Award two years ago. And I can see why. I find like the Dublin Literary Award really enjoys these kind of books that are a bit out there, um, a bit different in terms of, or a bit experimental. 
so I can understand why that that one but I yeah highly recommend if you are interested in having a little bit of a divergence from a traditional plot driven book. The fourth book that I read as a part of my 2023 TBR is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I have spoken about this book a lot on my social media so I will not repeat all the things that I've said about it. I think I even did a short video on it which I will link here. This book is absolutely incredible. It is a historical fiction set across generations of a Korean family that goes into Japan to try and make a living for themselves and this book is absolutely incredible despite it being about 550 pages I breeze through this book it is such a good read it's such an interesting read the characters are really fantastic and yeah I just can't say enough good things about this book so I would highly recommend checking it out Next, let's talk about the books that I've read as a part of my book clubs. So I'm part of two book clubs, the Sunbeams Jess Discord book club, which I will link down below, and also the Accepted Society book club. So the books that I've read for the Sunbeams Jess book club this year, I want to start off with The Sell Out by Paul Beatty. I don't have my physical copy here because I had gotten this from my local library and so I'll just put a picture of that up here but <clears throat> I believe this was December's uh, book club pick but I'd only finished it in January and I'll explain why. Essentially this book is it's quite an interesting read it is quite a unique take on racism in America and it's meant to kind of be a satire but it's very thought-provoking I thought it was an incredibly clever book and I'm glad that I read it however I would not pick it up again and I wouldn't likely recommend it to people just because I thought that the intertextual references were really difficult for me to understand. And I think maybe if you grew up in the States or you grew up in that era, maybe it would be a bit more clear, but I felt that I was reading this book with my phone Googling sort of references so I could quite, so I could understand the beauty of the book. And to be fair, once I'd had figured those out and I'd read them, I could really appreciate the brilliance of this book. However, I still think the way that it approaches race, uh, racism in America is really quite difficult to... It's a difficult topic to address and I think Paul Beattie does it so, so well. And I'm glad that I've read it, but I would not reread it. I would not pick it up again. And yeah, um, I think definitely have a look at it if it sounds like something you would be interested in. But yeah, just not for me 100%. But yeah, as I say, glad that I've read it. The Feb, I didn't do the January um, book club read because I had enough other things that I was reading and I had a really really busy month but the February read was Catherine Lacey's Pew and this book is exceptional it is such a great book and if you haven't read it I would highly pick it up. I would highly recommend picking it up it's a short little book it's like 200 pages and you could probably read it in one sitting but this book is just, it's so interesting. Essentially, it's, a, it's surrounding a character that wakes up in a small town that has no discernible characteristics. So no discernible race, no discernible gender, no discernible age. And they don't speak, essentially. They speak to certain characters, but they don't speak generally about their past. They don't really have any memory or anything like that. And 
and it's really interesting to see the character's responses to this character as I suppose mirrors of their identity and it is it's fascinating the way it is written and I'd read a lot of reviews about this book about how this character is meant to represent certain things like postmodernist writing and it really made me think that what Lacey has done here which is really exceptional is that you can have so many readings of this book and that's really quite a unique thing I think to find in a contemporary novel um so I thought it was really fascinating I really enjoyed it I definitely want to reread it so I can pick up a bit more about you know the the subtleties of the the language and the psychology of the characters which I think is so fantastic in this book the plot is also really really engaging so you're kind of kept on the hook for most of the you're kept on the hook for the entirety of the book so you are engaged with what's going on it's not kind of one of these novels where the the plot is 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 left wanting the plot is really really interesting and the pacing of the book is incredibly well done so overall yes probably a five star read in my opinion and yeah would highly recommend definitely definitely pick this up it sounds like something you're interested in the march book club read was stay with me by ayubami aidebo and this book was quite fascinating i know that she's just come out with a new book that is being very very highly praised and i wouldn't mind getting hold of that book because i really enjoy her writing this book is very fascinating. It talks about love and the development of love essentially against the backdrop of 1980s Nigeria and the political upheaval that is occurring at the time. And this kind of tension between contemporary values and traditional values and how love fits into the family unit and the different forms that it can take. I have to say that I read majority of this book in one sitting. It was incredibly engaging and the characters are very, very sort of developing as they kind of go through the book. They're not one dimensional characters by all means. At the end of the book, you actually start to see these very full formed characters, which is so fascinating because at the start of the book, you're kind of thinking, oh, these are typical the characteristics but it actually develops into something really spectacular and the twists in these book in this book there's about three twists I didn't see any of them coming I really didn't I thought that side of it the plot was incredibly engaging and yeah I really really enjoyed this book um is it something that I would pick up again Probably not. The reason being that the characters annoyed me by the end, but they, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be annoying at the end of it. They are, that's how they've developed in such a clever way. And so, yeah, I probably won't reread this book anytime soon, maybe in a couple of years time. I think it would be interesting to read this book maybe a couple of years on but yeah I thought it was really fascinating and I cannot wait to get hold of her her new book so the those are my Sunbeams Jess book club reads the accepted society book club reads that I have that I have done this year we had one in February which was all about love by bell hooks again I don't have this cover or this physical copy because I lent it out to my mum and she's reading it at the moment but this book was interesting 
to read. I, I thought it was an interesting concept and I really enjoyed the first couple of chapters of this book. However, you have to remember that if you pick up this book now and you've never read it before, it is 20 years old. I think it was released for the first time in 2020. And so some of the research behind it is very, would need to be updated and would need to be adapted for modern day readership, for modern day research. The research itself is generally quite hetero focused rather than more expansive of other family relationships. And it's also very distinctual in, or it's distinctly based in Hooks's experiences of love in her sort of nuclear family unit. And it doesn't explore much beyond that. And so I think it would have been interesting to have seen how that research would have developed a couple of years on down the line. Having said that, however, I still think this book has a lot of, has a lot of weight behind it in terms of its theory about self-love and learning to love yourself for, for your value. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And that's kind of dealt with in the first couple of chapters, which is why I say that the first chapters are better than the last chapters. I didn't really actually enjoy the last three or four chapters of this book. So nevertheless, as I say, I think it still holds a lot of value and I'm, I'm glad that I read it. The March book club for Accepted Society was a book that I did not finish. I could not finish this book. I really tried you guys. I know so many people love this book so, so much and I am just not one of them. On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vaughn. I started listening to this audiobook and I actually really enjoyed the audiobook insofar as that it was read by the author. So you know that it was read the, the way it was meant to be read. I don't know why I couldn't get on with this book. I understand that it's the format of it and the narrative technique behind it is meant to be fragmented because it concerns memory. I just, I couldn't get on board with the jumping around from one to the other, to the other, to the other. And I, I tried, I persisted as much as I possibly could. But at the end of the day, I was just like, I am not reaching for this book. It is sitting on my nightstand and it is not being reached for. I'm reaching for my other books and I'm just not finishing it. So first book of this year that I'm marking as do not finish is this book. Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to come back to it maybe in a couple of months or even a couple of years and try again because I know so many people love this book and I really wanted to love it. But... I just couldn't get behind it and maybe it's maybe it's me maybe I couldn't get behind it because I wasn't putting enough into it but let's see how we get on for now it's a d it's a do not finish and that is those are my book club books that I'm reading that I have read for the last three months so those are all the books that I have read Let's talk about the books that I'm currently reading because I don't want to go into too much detail, obviously, because I'm still busy with them. But I've got two books from my 2023 TBR. The Vagabond Spirit of Poetry by Edward Clark. This is my only non-fiction book that I have on my 2023 TBR. And actually, I would highly recommend this book. Even though I haven't finished reading it right now, I would highly recommend it. This book is absolutely essential I think if you are a student of literature or you enjoy reading and studying poetry. This book is really fantastic about learning to engage with poetry on a more sentimental level that's not just methodological that we are taught in university and it's essentially I suppose the spirit of the dead poet society in this book but just a little bit more technical. 
um and it's really quite fascinating i'm really really enjoying it i have skipped chapters in this book because the way the chapters are divided is per time period and then linked to particular poets of that time period so for example i've actually read the last chapter which is what hope does a modern poet have because we've just been doing modernist poetry in class and i thought it'd be interesting to read uh edward clark's perspective on this so I thought that was really interesting. It's kind of like bell hooks in that you don't have to read the chapters in sequential order. You can pick and choose which chapters you want to read. I'm obviously going to read all of them, but I'm really enjoying this. I think this is going to be a fantastic reference work um, and would definitely be, be of interest to literary students or people that enjoy poetry and I would highly recommend it. The other book that I'm currently reading as part of my 2023 TBR is A Ghost in the Throat by Doreen Agoffi. I probably butchered her name but she is an Irish author and this book is absolutely incredible. I'm only about 50 pages in to be honest but I can already see this book being one of my top books of the year. It is just so engaging. It's so rich in its imagery. It's so rich in its, its writing, in its narration. Its pacing is brilliant. Its intertextual allusions are fantastic. I'm just, I'm really loving this book so, so much. And I love that it is a local Irish a local Irish author who also writes part of or parts of the intertextual references are in Gaelic and I think it's just incredible absolutely incredible so won't say too much more about that because I want to finish it and I don't want to make any assumptions on it while I am still reading it but definitely a really incredible book. So I think that wraps up basically what I've read in the last three months. I think overall it's about eight books. Now, as I say, this isn't all the books that I've read because I've obviously read books for university. So please let me know if you would like me to include those books as well or to include the books that I read as a part of my course in a different video. But I thought for now, just to wrap up on this, on this video, I might talk about the books that I have bought in the last three months, kind of like a haul video, but yeah, just, you know, a little bit of additional book content for those of you that are still in, interested in that. Um, so as you may have seen in my top books video, one of my top books that I read this year and of all time is Ulysses by James Joyce. And I'd read it at a part, as a part of my modernist course, but it, I didn't have a great copy of it. The copy that I used for university has got my tads in it, has got written notes in it and all that kind of stuff. And I really wanted to get myself a beautiful aesthetic copy that can kind of be like my pride and joy Ulysses copy and not my worked broken up spine broken kind of copy. I came across this version at the recommendation of uh, a comment on that video when I was talking about looking for these kind of books and for anyone that is a literary book collector you will recognize this, I think. So this Ulysses copy is a unabridged replication of the original Shakespeare and Company edition published in Paris by Sylvia Beach in 1922. So obviously this isn't, you know, this is a floppy, floppy version book, but 
this cover, this print, this version is the one that was produced in 1922, the full copy of Ulysses produced by Shakespeare and Company. Now, if you're a literary person, if you're a, a, a book obsessed person, you will realize how incredible this is. And I'm so, so happy that I managed to get hold of this copy. It is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy with it. I've actually seen one of the original publications at the Museum of Literature. I'll pop a little picture of that up here. And it just, it looks, it looks the same. It looks the same and I'm, I'm so happy about that. So that's my first like kind of haul, I suppose. And then while we were on our little Irish road trip, uh, when we were in Galway, I went to Charlie Burns Bookstore, which is one of my favorite bookstores in Ireland. It is an absolutely incredible bookstore. And if you do find yourself in Galway, please go and have a look at this bookstore. I promise you, you will not regret it. It is floor to ceiling bookshelves of pure glory. And I just, I love it so much. But I thought while I was there, it was absolutely appropriate to pick up my first Claire Keenan book, Small Things Like These. This book has been raved about. It is shortlisted, I think, for the Women's Prize for Fiction. It was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 2022. And I'm very excited to read this book. I mean, I've never read anything of Claire Keenan. I know she's like, she's made a name for herself in the last couple of years, but local author, local bookstore, I thought it was appropriate to pick this up. Plus, I love that it's like a cute little mini hardback version of this book. So I'm very excited about that. So that was one that I picked up from Charlie Burns Bookstore. The other book that I picked up was this book, Augustus, by John Williams. And if you've seen my top books video, which I will link up here, you will know that John Williams' Stoner is one of the top books that I have ever read in my entire life, and I highly, highly recommend it. I actually hadn't realized that he'd written other novels. So I saw this. This was like in the sales pile. It was only five euros, I think. And it is basically a retelling of Julius Caesar. Um, by John Williams. And I'm super excited for that. I mean, I also just love this cover, right? Um, plus, it matches my current stoner version with the vintage uh, red spines. So there was a part of me that was really, really happy about that. The last book that I actually bought on that road trip was when we were in Dingle. And there was this tiny little gift shop kind of store on the water and I found this book which is An Old Woman's Reflections by Peggy Sawyers and this book I have been looking for for a long long time. Again when I was in the Museum of Literature here in Dublin there was an exhibition on Peggy and her sort of oral folklore tradition that she had established in the Basket Islands around the Dingle coast. And she's known as the queen of the, the Celtic storytellers, a born orator with a keen ear for a turn of phrase. She could shape a tale with naturalness that belied the subtlety of her craft. And I'm so excited to dive into this. It's a really short little book but it just has these little folk tales in it that she would have retold verbally and I think it's just so important to to pick up these kind of different these different forms of literature so I'm very excited to dive into that and then last but absolutely not least I suppose um my book reading weekend with Beck and Anne. We obviously went to a bookshop, we absolutely had to, and I picked up 
some books. So I picked up my, well, I picked up another Tilted Access book. Um, Tilted Access Publications, I've got two of them, but they are the ones that publish Tomb of Sand, another one of my top books uh, that I recommend. And this is Happy Stories Mostly by Norman Erickson Passari. And this book just, oh, I said that completely. Passari Vu, that's right. Um, is that right? Oopsie daisy. Have a look. Yes. Translated by Tiffany Sao and this book really, this book looks absolutely fascinating. I've heard a lot about Happy Stories mostly because it is kind of a, it's a collection of 12 stories that queer the norm, which I really, really like. Um, these tales put queer characters in situations and plots conventionally filled by hetero characters. So jumping back, sorry. I can't remember where I was, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, move on. The other books that I have bought, I jumped on the Claire Keenan train, as you can see, and I picked up Foster. Beck Anne and myself haven't read this, and we're really, really interested in reading it, so we're going to do a buddy read for this book. This looks really, really interesting, and I know this is the book upon which the there was a Gaelic uh, language film that was made recently that has garnered a lot of interest so I am really looking forward to reading this I love that she writes these little short books I mean this isn't even a hundred pages so I'm very very excited to dive into that the last two books were almost done um, is Homesick by Jennifer Croft. I picked this up because I came across Jennifer Croft when she was, I think she still is, but she was the translator for Olga Tussauds, um, The Books of Jacob, which were absolutely fantastic. I'm desperate to get hold of those translations, but I've read some of her other translations before. So, and she's she's a renowned translator. I, I've I've come across a couple of her works before and then I heard that she'd written her own book and I think it just is so interesting where how she brings in translations into her own fictional book. Uh, she talks about two sisters that have their own form of language and communication and they share everything until something kind of interrupts that. So I'm really excited to dive into this. I think Jennifer Croft um, has now been nominated for the Women's Prize for fiction for this book so I'm really interested to see how she gets on with it but yeah just absolutely excited for that. And then as you may know you may not know whenever Beck and Anne go into a bookstore together we always buy each other books and so this is the book that they'd bought for me um George Sanders is a swim in a pond in the rain just such a great such a great title haven't actually read anything of George Sanders but I've heard such fascinating things about Lincoln Embargo and I'm interested in reading it but this is quite a fascinating, um, a fascinating book because it's George Sanders's lectures on Russian literature that he gives to his university students that he's now collected into a book. And if you've known much about me in the past or at all, you will know that I am an absolute avid Russian literature reader. And so I'm so excited to dive into this. Um, I've never done any kind of formal learnings about Russian literature. I've just found that Russian literature is so fascinating. And so, yeah, I'm very, 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 very excited to dive into this. I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Funny, frank and rigorous. A swim in a pond in the rain ultimately shows how great fiction can change a person's life and become a benchmark of their moral and ethical beliefs. 
could not have said it better myself. And on that note, that is it. That is all the books that I have read in the last three months and all the books that I've bought in the last three months. So I, I think that's pretty good. I think eight books is pretty good. I would like to aim for 12 for the next three months. So let's see how we get on there. Let's see how much further we get along with the 2023 TBR. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video um and i will see you guys all in the next one thank you so much bye